Good morning, Internet. Yashoda here with West Coast Yoga. Today we're reading from Srimad Bhagavatam, First Canto, Chapter 1, Text 11, which reads as follows. Burini buri karmani shotavyani vibhagasha atasadhotrayatsharam samudritya nimishita. Translation. There are many varieties of scriptures, and in all of them there are many prescribed duties, which can be learned only after many years of study, and there are various divisions. Therefore, O sage, please select the essence of all these scriptures and explain it for the good of all living beings, that by such instruction their hearts may be fully satisfied. I'll read a few sentences of Prabhupada's purport for good measure. Should Prabhupada's purport. Atma or self is distinguished from matter and material elements. It is spiritual in constitution, and thus it is never satisfied by any amount of material planning. All scriptures and spiritual instructions are meant for the satisfaction of this self or atma. There are many varieties of approaches which are recommended for different types of living beings in different times and at different places. What Prabhupada's touching on in this verse is that the sages have made their essential inquiry. What is the need of the self? What is the actual need of the individual? How can we be satisfied? At the end of the day, the success of one's yoga practice can be measured on what is our level of self-satisfaction. In India, it's commonplace for sages to go into the forest to enter some kind of a trance, but we find more often than not, the sages emerge from the forest and open some kind of a philanthropic effort feed the poor, cure the blind, etc. If their standard of realization was so high, if they're meditating on the self, why did they leave the forest? And so this is what the sages are speaking to, finding a situation of yoga which is permanently joyful. This was also touched upon by the father of Bharat Maharaj. He said, Nayang deha deha bhajang nirloke, kashtan karman arhad vitam bhajanye, he says that both humans and animals are undergoing a temporary situation of life, but human life is distinct from animal life because we can practice what's called tapo divya, or divine austerity, and the culmination of this austerity is a permanently blissful situation in the spiritual sky, the paravyom. What Prabhupada is recommending in the purport is that we have to inquire about our self. Atma tattva, self-knowledge, is generally lacking in the secular modern institution. Formerly, students would approach a spiritual master and make relevant inquiries, and the guru would teach them and call them closer and closer to uh, inform them of confidential subjects of the Vedas. And obviously, the Upanishads and the Vedanta are clearly delineating the nature of the self and the nature of the absolute truth. Brahmeti, Paramatmeti, Bhagavan Eti, Shabdite. The absolute truth is defined in three features, Brahman, Paramatma, and Bhagavan. And this is preliminary realization. Nowadays, people are more interested in this age of Kali in some kind of a mundane philanthropic effort. Save the whales, save the rainforest. These efforts have value, but they are failing to satisfy the soul, and therefore we generally become disgusted. The culmination of disgust with the material world results in renunciation. Um, sometimes we go to a funeral and people become a little bit contemplative of life, the nature of life after a funeral. So this is like a type of disgust with matter. And it can lead us to preliminary God realization. When the living entity identifies that I'm like an insect in the spider's web, right? Material nature is acting like a web. It's restricting our movements. We want to move freely. We want to move freely from state to state, country to country, planet to planet, but we are very much restricted in our movements. And we are confined by the elements of time. If space is giving us facility, then time is restricting us. We have but 100 years. Time and tide wait for no man. They say, take a photo, it will last longer. So in this way, when we become disgusted, we identify that we are above and beyond this body, we have needs beyond the body, then the living entity becomes contemplative. And if they're pious, Krishna explains there's four types of pious people that surrender unto him. 
One of them is the seeker of knowledge. And in this way, we preliminarily realize God as the white light beyond. Many religious scriptures describe that at the time of death, there's a white light. And we can realize that we are above and beyond the body. But this realization is somewhat artificial. Even if we're elevated to the white light, some kind of a nirvana, we desire relationship. We desire friendship. Um, Why does Brahman take on these bodies for these pastimes in the material world? It's because we desire relationship. And so that takes us to the next level of realization, which is Paramatma, the indwelling soul. Every body has two souls, as Madhvacharya famously illustrated. There is the individual and the supreme side by side, like two birds in a tree. And when the tree of the body is destroyed, these two birds travel to another tree. Now this example has another side to it. Some people claim that when the soul achieves liberation, everything is null and void, like a bird entering um, some kind of a desolate environment. But we say it's like a green bird entering a green tree. He has his green spouse, they eat green food, they do green things. So the spiritual world, there's room for variegated enjoyment in the spiritual world. Thank you very much. See you next time for class. Hare Krishna.